Hell yeah, brother. Let's get into the, our hash rate predictions and specifications and announcement for the RX 7900 XT and 7900 XTX. This is going to be the flagship GPUs for Navi 31 RDNA 3, 79 or 70% 70 faster than the 6950 XT for 999 US dollars. AMD RX 7900 XTX, the flagship RDNA 3 GPU based on the Navi 31 XTX chip has been unveiled and comes packed with next generation chiplet architecture. The AMD RX 7900 XTX graphics card is amongst the two flagship products that will be fused with the Navi 31 RDNA 3 graphics core. Both of these GPUs will have a range of technologies that will result in higher gaming performance and rasterization and ray tracing while also delivering better power efficiency versus the RDNA 2 Navi 21 GPUs. Some of the highlights include AMD RDNA 3 architecture and that is going to be utilizing the chiplet design with up to 54% per, more performance per watt than previous generation RDNA 2 architecture which is just simply insane. They got the chiplet design will be the world's first gaming GPU with the chiplet design delivering up to 15% higher frequencies at up to 54% better power efficiency. It includes the new 5 nanometer 306 millimeter squared graphics compute die, which is GCD for short, with up to 96 compute units that provide the core GPU functionality. It also includes six of the new 6 nanometer memory cache dies. And these are where I'm really getting interested you know, we saw on the R RTX 4090 more layer 2 or L2 cache. As you guys may be aware, a lot of these CPU optimized or CPU coins are optimized to utilize this type of cache. And we did see it on the 6000 series. There have yet to be miners or algorithms that are utilizing or leveraging this technology. I really can't wait until we see what happens with the memory cache die stuff and infinity cache as a whole as it pertains to processing uh, you know basically anything on the uh, blockchain side of things there's nothing yet but this is something that i've been keeping an eye on ever since the 6000 series in rdna2 Ultrafast Chiplet Interconnect unleashing the benefits of second generation AMD Infinity Cache technology. The newest or the new chiplets leverage AMD Infinity links and high performance fan out packaging to deliver up to 5.3 terabytes a second of bandwidth, which is, I mean, I gotta say it again, simply insane. They also have an, an expanded memory and wider memory bus. This is the part we're most excited about from the mining perspective of things. So to meet the growing requirements of today's demanding titles, the new graphics cards feature up to 24 gigabytes of high-speed GDDR6 memory, running at 20 gigabits per second over a 384-bit bus. And this, my friends, is where AMD is finally at the top end going to be trading blows with NVIDIA on memory intensive algorithms. And the most important part, the absolutely simply most important part about this is that it's GDDR6, not GDDR6X. So you'll be getting close to a terabyte a second of bandwidth, but on traditionally more reliable memory modules which means cooler temperatures, lower power consumption, and easier to run in a mining farm. To top things off too, we are talking about a dual eight pin setup. So your previous mining frames, mining rigs, mining everything will just slot these little babies right in and be ready to go. And if you were going to swap from say like 3070s to these, you would basically be getting GDDR6 versions that are running at double essentially the hash rate of a 3070 and I think are going to be just absolutely smashing uh, uh, power consumption as well. So I, 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 it's sounding really, really good here. You got all the rest of the stuff you would expect from this though. You got AI acceleration support, a really big one for the gaming side of things, for the, for the content creation side of things, etc is DisplayPort 2.1 support. Remember RTX 4000 series or RTX 40 series only has DisplayPort 1.4 support. So 
I mean, AMD is already getting ahead of the game there as well. You got the Radiance Display Engine, uh, which is also coming out for this. And then you got the High Refresh Gaming. So you got DisplayPort 2.1, which is up to 480 hertz at 1440p, 4K, and 8K displays respectively. So uh, let's actually, it's 900 hertz at 1440p. Holy moly, Batman. 480 hertz at 4k so you could potentially have i mean you literally could potentially have a 480 hertz 4k monitor like that's some major cs goage right there boys and and 165 hertz on 8k displays this is just so awesome dude uh, dual media engine, so support simultaneous encode or decode streams up to 8K60 for HEVC and supports AV1 encode, delivering up to 1.8 times higher engine frequency than AMD RDNA 2 architecture. The AMD Navi 31 GPU, the flagship RDNA 3 chip, would power the next-gen enthusiast cards such as the Radeon RX 7900 XTX and XT graphics cards. We have heard that the AMD will drop compute units in favor of workgroup processors on its next-gen RDNA 3 GPUs, and each workgroup processor will house dual compute units with twice the SIM thir the, uh, 32 clusters as opposed to just two on each compute unit with RDNA. RDNA 2. The Navi 31 GPU with RDNA 3 architecture will offer a single GCD with 48 workgroups, 96 compute units, 12 SAs, and 6 SEs. This will give out a total of 12,288 SPs or stream processors. This is an increase of 2.4 times in cores compared to the 5120 SPs featured on the Navi 21 GPU. The GPU or the Navi 31 GCD is said to measure 300 millimeters squared and will come packed with TSMC's 5 nanometer process node. AMD's latest RDNA 3 GPU packs a total of 58 billion transistors and the top die can deliver up to 61 teraflops of compute performance. Starting with the RDNA 3 generation, AMD will be decoupling the clocks with the shader clock being a more conservative but power efficient focused 2.3 gigahertz while the front end clock speed will be at 2.5 gigahertz. So that's pretty crazy too. Here's the big part for miners. The Navi 31 GPU will carry six MCDs, which will feature 16 megabytes of infinity cache per die and are also likely to carry 64 bit 32 by two uh, memory controllers that will provide the chip with a 384 bit interface. While this equals 96 megabytes of infinity cache, which is lower than the 128 megabytes featured on the current Navi 21 GPU, there's also 3D stack solution in the works, which was pointed out recently and would double the infinity cache with 32 megabytes, 16 megabytes, zero. Uh, here you go. We'll read that. Capacities for a total of 192 megabytes of cache. So a 50% increase. Um, actually, not what we were looking for. We are looking for, scroll down here, let's get the numbers on it. Um, and as far as performance, they're saying 70% better in rasterization and 60% in ray tracing, which is really good. Rasterization is what I'm interested in. And let's get the memory specifications here. Oh, here's some power. So let's go over this. Most interesting aspect of this uh, 7900 RDNA 3 is that it comes with just two 8-pin connectors. <clears throat> which is something that AMD itself confirmed a few days ago with Scott uh, Herkelman and stated that they won't be using a 16-pin connector, which is utilized by NVIDIA. The graphics card will feature a total board power of 355 watts, which is an increase of 20 watts over the 6950 XT. Here's what's crazy, guys. That means as far as, so if we did an RTX uh, 3090 um, specs, right? And we pulled up essentially what that's doing on TDP. It this is essentially the same TDP as a 3090, right? Yeah. Okay. So as a 3090, which is crazy. So okay, let's get back into this though. Um, and and it's not going up to like that 450 watts that that they did on the 4090. Right, so here you go, 24 gigabytes of GDDR6, 384 bit memory bus, boom baby. And look at this, two, four, six, eight. Yeah, so 16, 24 
all on the front side so we're not doing any funky memory crap on the back it should be pretty cooled by the same you know cooler it looks like a triple fan design reference wise and we are looking at a 13th of December release for $9.99 on the XTX and $8.99 on the 7900 XT. And we do have memory uh, bandwidth, total bandwidth numbers here, 960 gigabytes a second on the XTX and 800 gigabytes a second on the XT. So what does that mean from a mining perspective? If you're looking at being the most efficient across the board and having you know options on memory intensive, as well as uh, as well as um, core intensive, it looks like you're getting an advantage across the board on the XTX. So my prediction here is that we're going to see the XTX be the card that you want to pick up. Now it does utilize 55 more watts on the total board power, but I think if you you're getting 160 gigabytes a second extra on the bandwidth. Now what's that going to translate into into hash rate? We're going to do Ethereum just to get you get you guys an idea here. Um, but we can calculate this out pretty easily because we do have, you know, previous hash rate numbers on the 6900 XT. The 6900 XT had 512 gigabytes a second of total bandwidth. If we pull up a percent calculator, we find that that's 187, basically 960 gigabytes a second is 187% of 63, or uh, sorry, uh, excuse me of uh of the 512 so then we can say what is 187 percent of 63 mega hash a second which was what the 6900 xt gets in hash rate and we find that the 7900 xtx should be hashing at around 120 mega hash a second and that is really impressive numbers we are talking about basically you know 3090 3090 ti and 4090 hash rate performance on et hash and then if we wanted to calculate that out as well for the 7900 XT, we can do that too, right? So we can say 800 gigabytes per second. So we can say what is, you know, 800 is what of 512. We can calculate that out. That's going to give us 156%. So we'll take this and say what is 156.25% of 63. Calculate that out and we can presume that the 7900 XT will get 98 mega hash a second And so what we're looking at essentially at this point is going to be respectively 120 mega hash a second uh, on the 7900 XTX and 98 to 100 mega hash a second on the 7900 XT and that is basically Right, going to be right out of the box. It's not like I'm pretty certain this is going to be what our hash rate numbers are. And the good news about this too is as you guys are familiar, AMD has a lot more tweaking than you can do with the core clock and the core voltage right out of the box, right? So slapping this in like driver support right off the bat's going to be good. Overclocking, as you guys know, like they're going to have overclocking directly set and ready in the driver package for Radeon. So you're going to be, we're going to be able to get in there, tune that baby down on the core, crank up and see how fast this new GDDR6 memory is and see if we can overclock it anymore. But right out of the box, like I said, these are the numbers I'm expecting. So I'm really excited about this release. We're also seeing, you know, basically less power consumption uh, across the board too. And uh, as far as compared to what uh, NVIDIA is having at this time, and really a direct replacement upgrade path for any of your mining rigs right now which is needed, right? Because if we're really looking at GPU mining in general, what we're finding, right, is that on the NVIDIA side of things, there's no direct path to upgrade with the 40 series. And that is because the 40 series has moved to these 12 pin things. Look, fire hazards, lots of other issues. You're gonna have to get ATX 3.0. You're gonna have to upgrade the power supplies and all your mining rigs, not fun. On the NVIDIA side, we're getting, you know, better overclocking features, a 384-bit bus, less power consumption, dual 8-pin. It just makes more sense right now, and uh, I think it's going to do uh, bode very, very well for uh, AMD here in the near future, both from the gaming side and the mining side. Thanks for checking out this clip from the Crypto Mining Show. You can check out the full episode here or more crypto content down here. Also, I'd like you to check out my Locals 
page at sonofatech.locals.com where you can become a member for free or choose to be a $5 a month supporter that unlocks additional content.